Creatures that are features in a movie. Ah, they've returned. Yeah, sorry about that guys, but I'm running out of ways to creatively usher in this title to this particular list series because as it so appears, you guys are absolutely ravenous for this kind of horror spectacular. And I said that as a compliment because over two parts of this series so far we've managed to cover some absolutely terrifying cinematic depictions of the titular creatures of the features. And luckily for us, there is plenty more where that came from. So let's take a look, shall we? Hello horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch as today we curiously take a look at the top five scariest creature feature horror movies, part three. Roll the clip. For the curious amongst you, that clip was from the 1996 thriller The Ghost and the Darkness, starring Michael Douglas and the fantastic Val Kilmer, detailing the true story of the Savo man-eaters, two lions that besieged a small town in Kenya in 1898. And you know what? I was so pleased to see several of you mention that movie in relation to this list because I remember watching that film with my old man as a kid and being absolutely terrified at the thought of man eating lions. So yeah, with a smile on my face, consider it today's most honourable of honourable mentions. I'm with the show. Kicking off at number 5, Razorback, 1984. Because speaking of real life man eating lions, move over. As per usual, Australia has got a thing or two to add to that point, or should we say a tusk or two. Razorback, a film that, rightfully so, has been requested on several occasions for this channel, and not just with this list series. And you know what? I think the winds have finally settled just right, because in many ways, Razorback is very much an acquired taste. But don't let that fool you too much, because whilst on the surface this film is very much a tongue-in-cheek relic of the 80s, deep beneath the surface, there is an incredibly unique creature feature that irks on the surreal more so than the popcorn chewing disaster pieces that we've come to expect. And it happened at a strange time in Australian cinematic history, at the tail end of what is known as Ozploitation Cinema, an awesome oddity of cinematic history that produced some strange movies indeed. However, by 1984, with the release of Razorback, they pretty much perfected the form, and the result was horror riddled brilliance indeed. Written by Everett de Roche, Razorback was based upon the novel of the same name by Peter Brennan and it had the directing clout to back it up. Directed by Russell Mulcahy, the man that would go on to direct Highlander, there can be only one. Part of the biggest appeal of Razorback is just how damn beautiful it is. Really, this film is a feast for the eyes and it's perhaps one of the only B-movie-esque creature features that could ever pull off a bizarre dream sequence smack bang in the middle of the second act in the middle of the outback. Because despite it trying its utmost not to, this film just works. Razorback is just a neat little package of horror goodness and a giant Razorback boar terrorising the Australian outback is exactly what we want. It tells a tale of Jake Cullen, played by Bill Kerr, whose grandson is kidnapped and eaten alive by a giant Razorback boar one night on his watch in the dark and outback where Jake himself is then ultimately blamed for his murder. What ensues on the surface is a tale of reckless revenge at any cost, a husband searching for a wife, an old man searching for closure, all in the midst of a disenfranchised society losing its identity. Uh, yeah. Whilst it may not seem it, Razorback covers some pretty weighty themes and it looks amazing whilst doing so. Swinging in at number four, Life 2017. Oh my god. It worked. You work it. You know what? I didn't expect to, but I actually really enjoyed this movie, and although it's more so wrapped up in the trappings of a sci-fi popcorn thriller, it very much has all of the key components for a genuinely unnerving creature feature horror, which, may I add, is a pretty difficult thing to do, because this film makes you think, and that's part and parcel as to how it delivers its horror, and I'm fine with that. Also, it stars Jake Gyllenhaal, and I'm pretty sure it goes without saying, but the man can't make a bad movie if he tried. I'm sorry if you disagree with me, but Jake Gyllenhaal is one of the finest actors of our time, and 2017's life is no exception. Directed by Daniel Espinosa, with writing credits from Rhett Rees and Paul Wernick, the writers responsible for Zombieland and Deadpool, life tells a tale of an unmanned space probe that returns from Mars with strange soil samples, potentially containing evidence of extraterrestrial life. Thankfully though, the inhabitants of this near-future Earth are wise enough to keep this new life form far 
far from the surface for now and instead it's captured and kept by the crew of the International Space Station. Obviously as you may imagine this strange soil sample certainly has a few interesting properties and the people of Earth are absolutely thrilled to discover that we are in fact not alone in the universe. So much so that after running a national school based competition to name this alien they decide on dubbing it Calvin and what starts as a cutesy little Calvin-esque amoeba, well that would be spoilers but as you're probably guessing from the title of this particular list, yeah things aren't pretty. Honestly I would highly recommend this movie particularly if you're jonesing for a dose of xenomorphic-esque horror because in many ways 2017's life is perhaps more so of a pseudo origin story to Ridley Scott's Alien than anything else and whilst that may be a little bit of a leap it also may be telling as to where this particular space vessel is pointed. Hint, things get pretty bad and the end to this movie is quite something. Give it a watch. Next up at number 3, Splinter, 2008. Jesus. Hey look, it's Skinny Pete. If only he'd had an El Camino at that gas station, maybe he could have ended up elsewhere and not there. But wait, what the hell are you talking about Jack? Less Vince Gilligan and more... Toby Wilkins? Well, whilst that particular horror director may leave a few of you scratching your heads, despite this being his first foray into feature length filmmaking, for his debut slog, 2008 Splinter is a creature feature piece of work that certainly deserves to be reckoned with. Really, this movie is really damn good and despite his outward appearance, when we boil Splinter down, this is an intelligent and remarkably creative entry for an otherwise unknown director. Why? Because when applied to the creature feature archetype, it gets pretty much everything right. Intelligent script with little to no exposition, check. Brilliant acting with some unexpected humour, check. Gross physical effects and a creative monster, double check. However, whilst getting all of these things right, Splinter also manages to turn quite a few of these things on their head. Mainly being that this is perhaps one of the few rare horror films where pretty much all of the characters actually make smart choices, which again is a rare thing, especially for a creature feature. It's a lesson that we should all learn, frankly. Written and directed by Toby Wilkins with writing credits from Kai Barry and Ian Shaw, Splinter tells a tale of a young couple, Seth Belzer and Polly Watt, played by Paolo Constanzo and Jill Wagner respectively. Whilst travelling on a romantic camping trip through the backwoods of Oklahoma, the pair get attacked and carjacked by an escaped convict named Dennis, played by Shea Wiggum, who steals the show in this movie and eventually the unlikely and unfortunate gang end up locked in a gas station, sheltering from a strange life form in the woods. You know what, I almost don't want to talk about the creature of this feature despite you know the title and post of this movie being a pretty huge giveaway but trust me there's more to it. Splinter is a lesson that we shouldn't ever judge a book by its cover particularly if that book is filled with parasitic spikes and it's running straight at you. No. Coming in at number two, The Tunnel 2011. Steve what? 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 Jesus Christ. And whilst my reverence for the awesome continent known only as Australia continues, there is no denying the fact that when it comes to creature feature horror, they are peerless, given the fact that, well, put it this way, they were making horror movies about wild boars in the 80s, and when the ceiling is set that high, the only way is up or down in this case, beneath the abandoned underground railway system of Sydney. But before we get to that though, I'd just like to make a point. You know what? I hate to come across as preachy, but it irks me a little when people find fault in a found footage film for being too shaky. Like, the whole point of found footage is to suspend the suspension of disbelief and then believe, if not for a moment, that what we're watching is real. Yeah, some movies definitely pull it off better than others, but to find fault with a film just because it's living up to its promise, yeah, I don't know. It's irksome. And when a film gets it so right and yet still get flack, well, such is the case with 2011's The Tunnel. Directed by Carlo Lorenzma and written by Julian Harvey and Enzo Tedeschi, The Tunnel is perhaps one of the most successful crowdfunded films of recent times, which also makes it worthy of note here. It tells a tale of Natasha, an Australian journalist who, following a drought and water shortage in New South Wales, decides to follow up on the government's revoked plans to use millions of litres of water trapped in a network of abandoned train tunnels beneath the city of Sydney. You see, initially, the Australian government were full steam ahead with this municipal plan but suddenly after they discovered something down there they decided to quickly pretend that they'd never said anything and refused to tell the public exactly why. And while being the keen eyed journalist that she is, Natasha quickly assembles a team and in an attempt to figure out just exactly what they're hiding, well, 
bad mistake because we all know that nothing good lingers in the sewer system of a city. At the very best, you're going to see some giant mass of sewage. At worst, well, you're going to get the monster from the tunnel. And that's all I'll say because despite being a movie that certainly doesn't show a lot, the tunnel is frighteningly effective at the implication of a horror monster, which in this day and age is a rare thing to not only see, but pull off well. And well, the tunnel does it to near perfection. Give it a watch. And finally, coming in at number one spot, The Ritual 2017. And you know what? Whilst in many ways this movie isn't exactly the most outwardly of creature features, when we truly strip it all away, all of the warning signs were certainly always there, albeit skewed behind an ancient Nordic tree line. You see, 2017's The Ritual is definitely a terrifying horror movie, although to see the creature feature wood for the trees, you may have to do a little bit of digging. But not too much digging because, yeah, you've been warned the Jotun is there, and you've been offered as a sacrifice. You see, the point is, although The Ritual certainly takes a while to get going, holy sh when we finally get the payoff, this is perhaps one of the greatest creature features of this century. And not only that, but it has one of the most well-developed and well-executed creature designs in a long, long time. Perhaps ever, because I don't say this lightly, the Jotun could give the Xenomorph a run for its money. The thing is, where this movie has its detractions, as in where we can find fault with it, is in its pacing. Unlike Alien, this movie is not perfect. Yes, I agree, the ritual is slow. It's a difficult hurdle to get over, but with repeat viewings, this movie only serves to get better and better over time. And believe me, that's hard to pull off for a creature feature. The thing is, this isn't just a creature feature on the surface. It's much more than that, and it confused some people. I get it. Maybe it's just me, I enjoy the slow pacing, but holy sh**, either way, when it gets going, this film is effective. Directed by David Bruckner with a screenplay by Joe Barton, 2017's The Ritual is based upon the 2011 novel of the same name by Adam Neville. It stars Rafe Spall, Asha Ali, Robert James Collier and Sam Troughton as Luke, Phil, Hutch and Dom respectively. Four friends who agree to hike the Kungsleden Forest in Sarek National Park, northern Sweden, following the death of their longtime friend Rob, whose wish it was to always hike the King's Trail. And that's all you really need to know, because although this film is neatly framed by several interlocking threads that serve to add some brilliantly earned depth to this movie, all we're concerned with is the forest and the many terrors that lurk within it, right? And what begins is a strange series of events, an odd carved rune in an abandoned cabin, an eviscerated deer left in a tree, or, you know, the low rumbling sound of something that certainly isn't thunder, all manage to twist and turn their way throughout the forest trail in all their horror glory. If you've been put off by this movie, I'd recommend trying it again. Give it some time, because the final act to the ritual is certainly worth it. Well, there we have it, horror fans. That list for the top five scariest creature feature horror movies, part three. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Disagree? Have any more to add to this list? Then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as any choice picks of your own. Before we depart from today's video, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from the past few days. Draven Gal says, I bet you don't think people are catching the little puns you toss in there, Jack, but some of us do. They're little hidden treasures, and don't worry, I won't spoil things by pointing them out. Well, Draven Gal, thank you very much. I'm actually on my climb to challenger in the legendary league of puns. Although, really, I'm hovering at mid to high gold. And that's actually a pretty awesome thought that my puns are like a treasure hunt. I really like that. Hey, how about someone try and see how many puns you can spot in this video? Oh wait, did we just start a new thing together? Wait, I hope there's actually more than one in this video. I'm not sure. Either way, have fun, and thank you for your kind words, Draven Gal. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Cheers, stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy.